Hello, welcome to my tech farm. And this is my review of uh, Lotmax Shark V2 uh, two in one unit, which is a laser engraver and bicolor color 3D printer. Now, the laser power is 1.6 watts, which is uh, mostly designed for the engraving. And the 3D printer has the volume of 235 by 235 by 265 in Z direction. And nozzle can be heat up to 260 degrees Celsius and the bed 100 degrees Celsius. This is uh, information from the website. Uh, and it also has uh, three fans, so the part cooling is quite good. And uh, it's able to print up to 150 millimeters per second speed. That's quite big speed and that will also be tested in this video. Now about uh, this type uh, B-color CD printing. So this hot end, uh, it only have one hot end, one nozzle. So two filaments goes into one hot end. Since we have only one nozzle, the bed leveling and preparing of the printer is easier uh, because uh, with those printers we, where we have two separated extruders and uh, hot ends, uh, here we have two nozzles and they must be uh, quite precisely synchronized uh, when they sweep the color, so the, the position must be exactly the same when they start the nozzle. The disadvantage of this system is that uh, the two colors are mixing in one nozzle, so this means we have uh, more waste material uh, when we are changing the color. Okay, let's see what's in the box. User manual. Two filaments, uh, PLA 200 grams. Laser engraving kit. This is a 1.6 watt uh, laser module and uh, yes, it has very small fan on it. Bicolor printing kit. It's extruder with some Teflon tube and cables, spool holder, toolkit, let's see what tools we have, a screwdriver, a wrench for nozzle, open end wrench, Allen keys, SD card with USB adapter, needle for cleaning the nozzle, some additional spare parts, limit switch, power cable, safety glasses for the laser engraving, USB cable, pliers, spatula, zip ties and uh, another spool holder. This is a display with the holder and the cable. Next level. Hmm, some plywood for the engraving. Okay, I cannot take out this part yet because the cables looks like they are connected already with the base. Oh, it's a tricky little bit. Okay, it's out. Oops. One bolt. And the box is empty. Before assembling, now it is easier to access. I want to see what's inside. AC power cable will go here, so probably this is the power supply and below this plate is the uh, mainboard unit. And uh, since I'm here I want to show you that uh, there is the switch. In my case it is pressed correctly. I can see 230 volts. The six screws are removed. Well, here are some uh, connections. It says auto leveling, dual, proper extruder, laser. This is for the SD card slot, and this is for the USB cable. And then this board is connected um, also with the main unit. Here you can see the stepper motor drivers. And if I see correctly, there are 2208 EMC drivers. Interesting, we have only uh, one XCL fan which uh, blows directly here on these uh, drivers and uh, properly uh, the main unit also gets some colder air. So properly these wires are from the power supply and uh, these wires are for the heating the nozzle and the hotbed. 
I cannot see. Uh, it, it looks like it, it's a hot glow, so I cannot pull them out easily to see uh, are the wires thinned or, or maybe there are ferrous on it. Okay, I'm now place this uh, plastic cover back and start with assembling. The first step is installing the gentry to the base. And I have to use these four screws from the bottom. <laughs> I have to show this in camera. I really like these uh, Allen keys, they are in brown color. And also I like when they have this uh, ball end. In this case we can use them under smaller angle. The gentry will be installed with these four long bolts from the bottom. Gentry is installed and I can move to the next step. And in the second step I have to pre-install this uh, second extruder here. I lose the bolts and I uh, move the T-nuts in this position. And I have to insert them in this slot and tie the bolts and then they will rotate 90 degrees. Step 3 is wiring the second extruder because the main extruder is already connected with the wires and for this I have uh, this wire but there are no instructions uh, about the cable management. This is filament runout sensor and this goes to the stepper motor. Yes, very big questions what to do with this uh, wire. So probably I have uh, to lock their position somewhere here so they're not in the way of the moving parts. And now let's move to the step 5 which is uh, mounting the spool holders. In case you are using a wider spools than I don't know, 78 mm or uh, 87 mm, uh, in that case you can move the cylindrical part to the other side, they will be longer then, uh, but in that case you have to flip the position of these because you have to rotate them. The cylindrical part has to be above the extruders. Installing the screen holder. the wire. Next step installing the Teflon tube to the extruder. Uh, the one side is already installed and only I have to connect uh, this side here. And also separately I have this Teflon tube which will connect the secondary extruder with the hot end. Same on the secondary extruder. It goes into the hot end approximately a little bit more than 10 mm, so it's not down to touching the nozzle. So I'm really curious what is the structure inside. I will try to write uh, to Lotmex uh, if they can send me some information about that before I publish the video. Actually the next step would be uh, fitting the filament, but I'm missing here two very important steps. So let's talk about the timing belt and V-slot wheels. The motion in X, Y and Z direction is possible thanks to the V-slot wheels. Now, uh, especially with this structure, as you can see, it has only one lead screw, so it's called a single Z-axis. Uh, it is very important this side to be tight. And it is tight already in factory, but this is how it works. So these V-slot wheels are fixed, but on the other side uh, it has this eccentric nut. And with this open end wrench I can rotate it and tight it. Now already checked, on Y axis and on the Z axis they are already uh, tight, but on X axis no. But this is not a problem, I'm actually happier when a printer arrives uh, when these uh, V-slot wheels are not tight. Because if they are tight in factory, in that case, who knows, maybe they will be like that uh, one month or several months in one place. And they ha can may have a small micro deformation on that spot. It is much better if they are loose and I will tighten it myself. Of course, it would be good if it would be described in this manual. Okay, let's tighten this one. So on these two wheels are fixed and this one is on this exacting nut and I will need this uh, open end wrench and rotate it until I cannot move uh, in opposite direction these two wheels 
easily or, or it doesn't bubble anymore. And that's it. Similar situation we have with timing belts. On the X axis it is uh, almost uh, good, uh, but I will show you. So, you, if you need to tighten it, uh, loose these two bolts. And tight. Similar on Y axis, and this is quite loose, so definitely this need to be tight. And I will loose these two bolts, and same on the other side, and repeat the procedure. Much better. It's assembled with, before I fit the filament. Uh, just a quick overview. So we have this uh, build surface. Uh, this magnetic base is uh, 250 by 250 millimeters, and uh, this is aluminium plate. And I saw some magnets below it, so it doesn't have the magnetic surface, but uh, fixed magnets. Uh, then we have this removable screen. And there is a SD card adapter, but this is only for the update the firmware of the display. This is the place for the SD card, for laser engraver, the secondary dual extruder, and it says auto leveling, and I can see it has some kind of BL touch, but I couldn't see the cable, maybe it's already installed. Oh, I forget to install the wires for the Z-axis. Interesting solution so far, so I see that they use some of these uh, optic uh, limit switches. So we have this plate on the z-axis and when it goes down, uh, it, it breaks the light and it will be triggered. This is the hot end and you can see it has two entries and two fans for the part cooling. So the part cooling will not be the problem with this printer and it says it is able to print on 150 mm per second speed, we will see soon. Extruders are here on the back side. So this one is fixed on the X axis. There is a filament runout sensor, and there is uh, another extruder and a filament runout sensor. So it has the one lead screw, so it is single Z axis. Well, I can see some holes here, so probably it is prepared to add another Z axis. Here. It's uh, very useful, for, especially this is a little bit bigger printer than Ender 3, so it will fix better the, the other side of this uh, X axis all extrusion. And of course, very important, one more time, check the voltage on your printer before you turn it on. Let's insert the filaments, and I like that uh, they arrived on the spool in the vacuum packaging. And this is the direction of the feeding. Cut the end of the filament under 45 degree angle and then uh, through the filament runout sensor, then through the extruder. And I have to press this arm to push it through the Teflon tube. And now the other side, but even if you are printing only with one color, you should put a piece of filament here in this second uh, uh, filament runout sensor. Same solution because it looks like this spool holder is a little bit small, so this is the full size spool. And it, uh, well, it fits on it, but very hardly, so uh, there is not enough space if it if it'd be completely full. Hmm. Of course, this problem can be solved very easily using a longer bolt and print some spacer here, but uh, yes, another solution which has to be printed by the user. And again, stop the feeding approximately 10 millimeters from the hot end. And it's time to turn it on. There is the switch. And after approximately 10 seconds, it is ready for using. Very nice and sensitive screen. And actually, it reminds me on the Epperson Super Racer. So, uh, those two are far the best uh, touch screens I tested on the CD printer so far. And it's time for the bed leveling. At first I have to do the manual bed leveling and after this the auto leveling. And I'm a little bit sad because uh, this uh, printer arrived with these springs. So uh, the position of this bed is not fixed. I have to adjust it with, with these knobs. 
And uh, usually when the printers now arrive with the pre-installed uh, auto bed leveling sensor, the position of the bed is fixed. There is no need for uh, manual bed leveling. But here I have to do it because I have to uh, make the printing surface parallel to the moving pad of the nozzle. And only after this I will do the auto bed leveling. This means it will create some kind of offset mesh to compensate any inaccuracy uh, in the surface of this printer. But it is best if it doesn't have to compensate anything at all. Control, leveling, manual leveling. And uh, these are uh, preset positions for the nozzle. And then I have to rotate the knob until I get some friction between the nozzle and the paper. I finished the manual bed leveling. Now the printing surface is parallel with the moving pad of the nozzle. And now I will do the auto bed leveling. The automatic bed leveling is finished and uh, it go back to the center position and now I have to check that I have approximately 0.1 millimeters between nozzle and printing surface with this paper and if not I can adjust it with this plus and minus uh, buttons. So don't forget with minus you have to raise it and with plus you have to lower it. Okay now I have that uh, required friction between nozzle and the paper so the distance is correct and it's ready for the printing. Okay, let's preheat it and now you print something from the SD card and uh, I will try to do two printings, so a single and a double color. And then later I will try to prepare some own uh, G-code and print that. And later I will try to uh, use the laser engraver. And I will suggest for the first printing print something from the SD card because that G-code is prepared in the factory. And if there is any problem you know that it is not cased by the slicer. Before I start with the printing, I always lift the z-axis a little bit higher, so until the heating it will not uh, be on the print surface. And I will clean the surface with some isopropyl alcohol. I am preheating it and I will push the main filament, the green one, through the nozzle. Now let's print something, print. Uh, it will be good to know how long are these printings. Let's say dog. Confirm. During the printing I cannot set the baby steps and I hope that <laughs> I, I did it uh, previously correctly. And it looks like it's okay so far. What I can do, I can stop the printing, pause the printing or go into the controls and uh, okay, see some main data maybe the fan speed or similar but here what can I set the temperature the fan the printing speed probably in percentage and extrusion again in the percentage so I'm missing here maybe the baby steps or something like that well this is now fourth or fifth layer and uh, I can see the fan is already on full speed now, so I can measure the noise. Well, I'm a little bit in trouble because the printing is at 24% uh, and uh, I have to go to pick up my daughter into kindergarten and it is not too smart to leave a new printer without any supervising, but uh, I will give it a try. Okay, so wish me luck. It's not fair, you will find out is it successful in a few seconds. We are back, but it's not fair to just to show you the results, so you must feel a little bit the tension I did. Okay, everything fine so far. Printing is finished in 2 hours and 15 minutes, confirm. Just quick check of the bed adhesion. And it's good, I hope not too good. Very strong bed adhesion, I hope not too strong. This would be really impossible if this would be a glass. 
Of course, this G-code is prepared by the manufacturer, but uh, the surface quality is great. Absolutely no stringing. These are seams on the back side. So this is really promising so far. Dragon code. Confirmed. It's pushing some filament for us starting with the green one. And probably this will be the vibe tower. I call it uh, often a vase tower because here it will push the material and it change the color. So the colors on the object are sharp. And now it starts the object and it's starting with the green color. First layer looks good. Now with the retraction of the green filament and it will start with the second one, with the orange. But I can see some big spot there. I worry about this spot, I try to remove it. It finished with the printing with orange color and now I don't have that barb anymore. To have a nice and sharp colors on the 3D printed object, it used this swap tower and uh, here you can see maybe the transformation between these two colors from the green and the orange. Printing is at 50% now. And it was printed in 4 hours, I wasn't here. This is that uh, wipe tower when it cleans the nozzle from the previous color. And thanks to this, colors on the printed object are super clean. There are no mixing colors. And it's time to prepare the slicer and print some own G code. I saw the slicer which was on this uh, memory card. And it is just uh, some kind of modified Cura. And I have to uh, add the printer. And then I have to modify it. Uh, I have to add the second extruder and to modify the start G code. It would be good if this would be preset or something like that. And then I tried uh, the two color Banshee. So uh, this will be printed in two different colors. And I prepare them, slice them and uh, started with the printing. It's changing the color now. But the vibe tower it started in the air inside. And it was finished in 2 hours and 44 minutes, but uh, something happened on the last layer. I wasn't here, so uh, I guess again when, when it prints constantly with one color and then starts the other on some layer, uh, then it starts to print in the air this white tower. But I have to analyze the G code a little bit. Properly some settings in the Cura because uh, the problem is when it starts, for example, with green color, uh, it only started with orange on 8 millimeters and it started to print on this white tower in the air. Actually, they know about the problem, but it's not solved so far. But basically, the bench looks great. Let's analyze it. So here was that bulb at the end when it started with the printing. I can see some minimal stringing. But otherwise I could say this is quite great bench. A few horizontal lines I can see from time to time, but not much. 
And I noticed the edges are not so sharp because after every color it moves to the side to change the filament. Uh, for me printing in two colors is not so important but uh, I always wanted to try. Uh, this is Primo Select PVA water soluble filament and I will print uh, supports in this material and I will place it in the water and to see if it works. I already used this uh, but with the manual filament change. This is not cheap material but uh, it is important to know the possibilities. This object has very big overhangs and it needs those hardly removable supports and this time both materials will be presented in every layer so I will not have that problem with wipe tower as with the Benchy. And again that burp and it appeared on first layer of every two color printing I tried. When it switched from PVA it lifts the nozzle and I can see some oozing. So it would be better if the nozzle would stay on the material and only then move to the white tower. And it's printed in 50 minutes. With PVA it is not new that I have a lot of stringing. But that's the issue of the material, not of the printer. But anyway, this looks good, but let's put it into the water and uh, see if the results. <laughs> and after one night... And at the end it's time to check this uh, 1.6 watt uh, laser module. So the module will be placed here, it's holded only by these two screws. And if I place it upside down, then I don't have to remove the bobbin tube. Installing the laser module on X carriage. And then this laser box, and there is a warning that if I do it wrong, then I, I can destroy the printer. That's scary. <laughs> Well, again, I have a small question with the cable management. So there is a resin module, there is a small cooling fan, and it has its own limit switch. I will use now the safety glasses and turn the printer on. And it says laser curve, so it recognizes that now it is in laser mode. Now let's set the focus. Now I found this instructions a little bit short. So it says go to the control and then uh, let's set press this button and now I can move up and down until I get the smallest point. But it don't go down because uh, it doesn't mention that probably first I have to do first homing and only after that I can try to set the focus. Control and homing. Now the position is zeroed and now I can go there and set the focus. So I'm turning the laser on and going down by one millimeter. <laughs> so this means that the, uh, it works on full power. Uh, I think it would be wiser if it would work on 920% power so I don't burn the material which I'm testing on. And then I will click save to save this uh, position. Okay, and now I can try some engraving. Rotmax laser can be reached from the slicer, but it is separate software. And first I will try to prepare this uh, black logo. And I will not change anything, I will use different settings. And the second test will be preparing this grayscale image. And again with different settings. So it started, it's very slow, so I will just create a time lapse. This engraving was extremely slow. And it finished the printing in 15 minutes. Now this is quite dark and during the engraving I saw that I could speed it up, but unfortunately I don't have that option during the engraving. I'll try to engrave this grayscale image. 
Now I will stop this engraving tool. It's uh, too strong. I decided to edit the Gico directly, so I raised the speeds uh, by 10 times and also the strength uh, to 500, that's 50%. And now I'm graving the same black logo, but speed up 10 times. Definitely, I can see the moving is faster. Yes. And this time, instead of 15, it was finished in a little bit more than one minute. And now let's try the Padme, which here I cancelled because it was overburned. And this time, engraving of this grayscale image had acceptable speed. And it's finished in 17 minutes. So these are different settings of the Lotmax laser software. And when I edited the G code, speed it up 10 times, this is the result. And even my recording camera recognized that it is human face. And my final thoughts, well, uh, my feelings are a little bit mixed because this is my first two color printer. Uh, but again, I have that feeling uh, that this is one of those 99% finished Chinese uh, 3D printers. Uh, for the single printing, okay, it's, it's uh, good, really gives a great quality. Now with the dual color, well, if it survives first a few layers and everything is okay, then it will be finished properly. Uh, that white tower problem I had with this Banshee is a uh, known problem and it's on GitHub. Uh, and uh, they are working on this solution almost two years. And uh, well, for resin engraving, well, here I have that feeling that uh, not 99, but maybe not even 90% finished uh, for that part. Okay, so it worked, but uh, you saw actually uh, by different settings uh, the result was uh, useless completely. Uh, if I manually uh, speed up everything by uh, 10 times, and uh, raise the laser strength to 50% that S500 and in that case I got quite good results but why is it not prepared by default? Okay, so a uh, few more suggestions for improvements. So first uh, this second uh, spool holder, uh, this one here, it should be higher because the full size spool cannot fit here. Of course it can be 3D printed apart and we can lift it ourselves by some distancer but why is it not solved uh, by the manufacturer? Cable management for this second extruder, also you saw for the laser engraving. Uh, more detailed manual because, for example, it's not described the wrist wheels, uh, how to tie it, or maybe the belt, timing belt. It's not obvious to everybody. Since it arrives with the beer touch, uh, usually I notice that those printers uh, don't have the springs. It's no need for manual belay, so this is just additional uh, step we have to do. So. Uh, my advice is if it arrives with the beer touch and they trust to this auto leveling sensor, we don't need those uh, springs anymore. Or at least uh, it would be good if we would have some stronger, those yellow springs. Uh, in that case, it will hold the position uh, for a much longer period. Firmware update. So definitely, uh, for example, temperatures of the nozzle and bed should always be visible on the display. I am very missing the setting of the baby Z steps when I start the printing. It's very often for me that I start the printing, I can say, oh, it would be good to be a little bit lower or higher, but I don't have that option in the, uh, on the display. Uh, about the structure, this has the single Z-axis, and this is bigger uh, than Ender 3. And definitely I didn't try 150 mm per second speeds, because uh, it puts a big uh, moment of inertia, and until it's not supported on the other side, it's useless to try it. So my advice would be to uh, Lotmax to provide on their website a kit upgrade for dual Z axis with I don't know another stepper, just with a cable which will split the current to uh, two stepper motors. Yes, they will get uh, less current, but the load is also in half. So if you assemble it mechanically correctly, it should work without problem. Be careful with this bed. Uh, PETG may stick too good to it. Uh, it may break off parts. Uh, I had this experience with the Prusa, it has very similar uh, sheet, that smooth sheet. And uh, they suggest to use some glue stick or something as a separating layer. 
slicer fix of course this is not error by the lot max but error of the cure i hope they will fix this quite big problem because if you don't use both colors uh, constantly in every layer uh, in that five tower uh, it will be started printed in the air so this is no problem uh, they are working on it when we will solve i don't know about the laser, the software is very buggy, so uh, this software, uh, maybe again advice to the Otmax that uh, try to concentrate to optimize uh, using the laser GRBL maybe, instead of this uh, Otmax laser software. Whew. Uh, long conclusions, but uh, yes, definitely very interesting printer, so uh, possibility of two color printing is fantastic, especially uh, with the water soluble filaments, uh, so for me that's very important, more important than printing two colors. But it would be good, so these, these uh, things to be fixed. That was my experience, thank you for watching and happy printing!